What is going on everybody? It is Nexus Complex and this is Season 3 of Nettle Queen's Castle Draft League. We are back for another season of doubles. We're back for, to 6v6 from the 4v4 that we were doing in Arcanines. Both are fun, but I think I prefer the 6v6 just because I like seeing the other Pokemon shine. 4v4, that team of 12, you don't really get to bring the ones, you know, a little bit of variance. Oh, excuse me. Still kind of waking up this morning. Uh, Jacoby's time zone is uh, about eight hours ahead of me, so scheduling the game is uh, it was kind of a, it was kind of a stretch. We made it work. Obviously, it's like Saturday morning for me, so pretty pretty chill. Nice little early morning. Wake up, check the Pokemon, get everything set up. So. Trying something new with the background audio. I'm gonna add some music in, as opposed to what the game has. I think that could be fun, a little fun thing to do. But anyways, yeah, Jacoby has a really, really good team. I have never played Jacoby. He was in Arcanine season two, but the way that the league was done, he had a coach and he was basically like their teammate. Um, he hadn't done a draft league before, so we didn't want to throw him all the way into the deep end. But he did really well in that, and uh, he he came into this league. And this is our first game of the season against him. <clears throat> I have not seen him or played him, so I don't know the style he wants to go with. He has some definite threats. Smart Shadow. He's got Reggie Lecky, which could be annoying with screens. Also, the thing hits really hard with Transistor. So, I'm not sure where we want to go with this. I have a basic idea, but I really don't know how I want to roll. I've been really like waffling back and forth with my leads. I don't know what I want to what I want to run, but I think regardless of what happens here, this will be a fun match and I hope you guys enjoy. I think, I think I want to do Incineroar Dracofish as the leads, um, and depending on what I see, will determine what I do from there. Okay. So as far as I know, he doesn't really have a Trick Room Pokemon here. He has Swampert. I could just lead Raijin and Brody. Or do I want to go fish? I think we just do this. Well, we could go Raijin and Brody and just be assholes at the gate. And then figure it out. Let's just do that. Let's just be assholes out the gate. And then see what happens. But then we lose. See, we, we can fake out, and it's really, really good. We're not going to outspeed. Yeah, let's just do it. I got no time. So, yeah, we're going to try to do Thunderous Crocodile. Seeing what he leads with. Already said good luck, have fun in the chat, but if you watch this, sir, good luck, have fun. Very looking, very much looking forward to this battle with you, my good fellow. Regilecki and Pex. So this is actually optimal for the leads that we chose. Lecky, so it really depends on what Lecky is doing. If Lecky is attacking, that, uh, that changes things. Uh, I don't know if, well, Thunder has Volt Absorb, so that's actually really good. So the Baneful Bunker, 
smart play. And the reflect, another smart play, for sure. I think this should still hurt uh, Lecky pretty badly. So we get rid of Lecky. He got the Reflect up. Not a huge deal. Um, we do have Psychic Fangs on Dracofish, so we can do that. Um, depending on what he has. So Swampert's coming in. That's not ideal. But we are specced, so we will switch here. Let's go into Cyclops. Swampert will take the uh, EQ pretty well, but Toxapex won't. And if need be, um, if we if we do live this here, we can go ahead. So Reflect is huge, Liquidation into Crook, that's fine, that's okay, I kind of thought that this was going to happen, I kind of threw those out there just to attack and die. That's actually optimal, um, we have Magic Guard. So now we're going to go back into... Ryzen, we have Grass Knot, which isn't great, but he won't be expecting it, I don't think. So we're going to Grass Knot into Swampert, and we're going to set the Tailwind. I'm, I'm thinking he's not thinking about the Grass coverage because he knew. Like, he switched Swampert in, I guess, maybe expecting the specs. I kind of saw the Baneful Bunker coming since he revealed it. So I think this Grass Knot will destroy Swampert. Yep, so now we'll get the Tailwind. We already kind of had speed control based on the team that he brought, but now, with the Tailwind, we were assured to have it. I don't know if I want to. I might max Thunderous here. I don't know. I can't imagine he wants Pex to stay on the field next turn, uh, facing Sigalith and Thunderous. That's just a terrible matchup on both sides for the Pex. The Pex! More Shadow. So we should outspeed. I think we're just gonna go full on... I kind of expect Marshadow to max, so we're going to double into it, go with the max Mindstorm, that kind of hurts us for Incineroar, but right now this doesn't look like it's really as much an Incineroar game, um, so I don't know, you know, we could use Intimidate here, but I think Marshadow either maxes, and even if it does max, I think it has the potential to die here. Um, we lose our specs, not a huge deal right now. And I think the Life Orb Air Slash, if it does live the Mindstorm, the Air Slash will sh should pick up the KO on Marshadow here. I don't know if we die from a Shadow Sneak if the Marshadow is banded. But, yeah, next turn. I don't know. Marshadow probably kills if it has uh, and it Shadow Sneaks, we probably die the Sigalith, but Sigalith did what it needed. Oh, we did max, so this should kill. And then I wish we would have Mindstormed here against Pex, but it's still not going to appreciate an Air Slash. So 
So that's both his S tiers down. Let's see how this air slash does against Sigilet, uh, against Pex. Decent. Skull. Yeah, we're taking that. So right now we're not too worried about Pex. Thunderous is a huge threat max. We lost our specs, but I don't know if we need it. Nagandale's next. We have Ice Beam for the Nagandale, but also we have Max Mindstorm, which it's not gonna like. So I think at this point we can just kind of double into everything and ignore Pex. I think this is a defensive, kind of more of a singles Pex. It's gonna do Toxic. It's got Scald for Burns. Um, I don't think we really need to pay much attention to it right now. I think Thunderous should be able to pretty much clean up here. The X goes, so out is the last Pokemon Amoongus. Um, we should be okay. If this Max Mindstorm kills Nagandal, um, the Ice Beam is... I think we're good here. Um, I think the Ice Beam paired up with the Max Mindstorm should KO Nagandale. Things are weird. For sure, that thing is scary. Oh yeah, the Ice Beam is going to pick that up. And now, and Toxapex, which are mainly support Pokemon against Thunderous and Sigilyph, which is fantastic matchups for us. They can protect here. Um, Amoongus is definitely way more annoying, so let's try to take him out. He could protect, but like I said, Amoongus is annoying. He could sleep. He could sleep in Rage Powder, so we'll just take him out first. And then Pex, I don't think, really does much to us, based on the moves that I've seen. It's a uh, Scald, Toxic, Baneful Bunker. So there's the Protect. This Mindstorm will still hurt. I'm guessing it's probably going to Toxic. That's okay. Um, what do we want to do? So we know Amoongus can't... So we're locked into Grass Knot with Ryzen once we go back to normal here. So we'll have to switch. Um, let's just go... Obama Fish. And then we're going to just Air Slash the Amoongus. This should really mess it up. Like I said, we kind of we kind of have already taken out the threats. Now it's just kind of supports that could whittle us down, which we have a pretty good lead right now. So even with the toxic and all the things that could happen here, we should be okay. I would guess that he knows that um, Thunderous is spec at this point, but I'm not sure. I hope this Air Slash picks up the KO. Oh, so close. Alright, so I don't know if he's going to alternate protects, or what the plan is. But we have Psychic Fangs on the Draco. So just in case the Amoongus doesn't protect here, which I'm expecting, we're going to try to pick it up with the Air Slash. 
the Psychic Fangs should definitely hurt the Toxapex. Yeah, so there's the Protect. Could have probably doubled into Pex, but it is what it is. The Psychic Fangs should hurt pretty well. Damn, that Pex is bulky though. Got rid of the Reflect. That burn can be annoying. But the Psychic Fang, now that the Refract is broken after the Light Play, we can definitely uh, do some things. We could just Rend right here. But we're just going to keep Psychic Fanging. Um, let's just set the Tailwind. Why not? Why not? I don't need it, but... I feel like it's gonna alternate the protects, so I'll just I'll just throw the tailwind up. Alright, so there goes Amoongus. Guessing this is gonna be toxic or scold on the fish. Alright, so we're going to use this turn for if he potentially tries to do something with the Pex. We're going to go into Ryzen, which can Choice Specs Volt Switch. So if he protects this turn, next turn will definitely be it, as the Psychic Fangs and the Volt Switch will kill poor Toxapex. Wow, no burn. Not that it would really matter at this point, but uh, that's been huge. We've taken two scolds. No burns! We're gonna go ahead and bolt switch. This should pick up the KO. And there it is. So GG. The Richmond Netto Kings, really newly relocated, have picked up their first win of the season. We move to 1-0. We have another matchup coming up against Haskell, but I will talk to you about this game more in the post-game. Alright, so, first game of the season um, went extremely well. We kind of got fortunate in the fact that everything that Jacoby and the Motown Marshadow brought kind of were weak. <laughs> to what I had. Uh, Thunderous with the Psychic and Thunderbolt uh, Discharge and Volt Switch uh, pretty much covered everything that he brought. And then we had Grass Knot just for Swampert and it literally worked out. I mean, Thunderous was huge in this game. Um, I have to go back and take a look at the KOs. Thunderous did really well. Then obviously, Crocodile did his part. It went down, but we didn't need Crocodile to survive there. That whole lead combo was just basically like spam until you die, and then we'll figure it out from there. Incineroar and Gigalith did not even see the field, so that was optimal. When you have Pokemon that don't have to come and play, that means the game's going well. Jacoby, I think, had a good game plan. I think it's just he chose the wrong Pokemon. Like, I just happened to choose the right Pokemon, really. Um, if you don't choose the right Pokemon, it, it leads to a bad matchup, and that's kind of what Jacoby ran into here. So, I don't think by any means this is going to be in, indicative of what the season is going to be for both of us. I think we're both going to have our ups and downs. Jacoby is a great player. This is the first time I've played him, but to go where he got to in the Arcanine's Draft League last season, as a new draft league player, he has a ton of upside and potential, so I'm very excited to see where he goes from here. We're going to continue prepping for Haskell and the Cajun Crocodiles, who are a second week one matchup. That game should be coming sometime in the next couple days and within the week for sure. And yeah, 
thank you guys for watching. As always, I have been Nexus Complex, and I will see you guys on the next one. But I'm still fly, I'm still fly, I know. I'm still fly, I'm still fly, let's go.